A trolley on the track is attached by springs to fix blocks X and Y as shown in the figure. Track may contain uh, many small holes through which air is blown vertically upwards. So imagine all these holes is going to go... So the trolley is partially floating on the track. Which is great, no friction. <laughs> this results in the trolley resting on a cushion of air rather than being in direct contact with the track. So no, no friction acting on the trolley. The trolley is pulled to one side of equilibrium and released. So this trolley pull either side and it oscillates initially with simple harmonic motion. But after a short time, the blower is switched off. No more air cushion under this trolley to make it float. The variation with time t of distance l is shown as below. So we have this nice simple harmonic motion graph where you do an oscillation, 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 oscillation. Then something happens. Your amplitude gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller and smaller. Hmm, we have seen this graph before. First, we need to find though the initial amplitude of the oscillations. So initial amplitude, we can just read off from here, but do not say 25 or 15. These are lengths of the spring. You want to say your equilibrium position is here. Oops, uh, somewhere here, okay. And that means your amplitude is the maximum displacement either upwards or downwards. This is amplitude, amplitude, and it's only 5 cm. So we got to say 5 cm. Actually, since to be on the safe side, don't write 1 SF. Write 5.0 cm. Ah, I got to put the point zero. Okay, so here is one mark here. Just A1 for the amplitude. Okay, next. Then we have the angular frequency of the oscillation that we need to find. Angular frequency. What is angular frequency? Let's write down what the equation is first. So omega is 2 pi over t. We need to find t. Let's go to our graph and find t. Okay, so this one, I think the easiest is to just look here. La. Here to here. Highest point, go down, come up. Highest point. Okay, this is t. This is 4 seconds, 1 full cycle. Okay, let's write that down. So calculate, this one will be 2 pi over 4. Or you could say pi over 2. But do not leave it as pi over 2. This is not mathematics. This is physics. So you got to write the decimal place. Don't, no fractions allowed. You can lose marks for fractions. Right here, 1.57 or 1.6. I like to keep one more SF for this one. So this one is A1 mark. And if you know that omega is 2 pi over t, that's one more mark. Sometimes they might give you for reading from the graph 4. Period is 4. That works too. Okay. Uh, we can do that this time. All right. Here. Maximum speed is what we need to find next. The maximum speed in CM of the oscillating trolley. So if you don't remember any equation, uh, you stay calm first. At the first page of every past year question, there is this velocity equation for simple harmonic motion. So go scroll to the first page and you will see it there. It's like this. V equals to omega times A squared minus X squared. This one is written there. Every past year question also have this equation. Then you think of maximum speed. Where does that happen in terms of oscillation? Maximum speed will happen at equilibrium position. So at x0, v max occurs. It moves the fastest, either downwards or upwards or downwards. So we need to sub in when x is 0. Lah. So that means we'll just have oh, omega equals to square root of a square minus 0. I am going to write. Lah. This is v max. Wait a second. Square root of amplitude square. I am going to write the square root, lah, just omega a. And this is how we get the equation for maximum velocity. So now we plug in all the things that we know. So this can be 1.57 times, 
Let's check the units. Ooh, radians per second. And they want it in cm, so I'm just going to keep my 5.0 cm amplitude. And this one will give me about 7.85. Or you could write it as 7.9. This one is 1 mark. If you got the maximum velocity equation, that's 1 mark. Or you used it. A note of warning is you will not get the correct answer if you substitute in uh, the length. Like you say, oh, miss amplitude is 25 square minus 20 square. Cannot. <laughs> you, you, you cannot use L. Don't use L. L is the length of the spring from the graph. Yeah, this L. Say, miss, ne? 25 and 20. No, 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 no. We use the displacement. Displacement x 0 here. Displacement x is 5 you will get different values. You will not get the correct answers. Okay, the next part. Apart from the quantities in A, which is angular frequency, speed, and amplitude, describe what may be deduced from the graph about the motion of the trolley between time T0 and T24. No calculations are required. This is a strange question, so vague. Motion of the trolley. Uh. Motion could be a lot of things. It could be displacement, velocity, acceleration, time, force. I don't know. What else can we see from the graph? So this question, um, I don't know. We gotta, there's a lot of things we can talk about. You could talk about maximum displacement at 25. Oh, we already talked about amplitude. Cannot. Okay. You can talk about velocity. Maximum velocity occurs when the gradient is the steepest. So this is V max. Oh, at many points though, here, 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 all the green dots, that's where all the thing is moving at maximum velocity. So these are V max. You could say when it occurs. Mm, we could also talk about the period, although we kind of read it already. Okay, yeah, we can talk about the period. We can talk about damping. Because you see, the amplitude was steady and then it starts to decrease. So this is where we say damping has occurred. Or specifically, we can say light damping. Heavy damping will not have oscillations. Heavy damping is going to look something like... Uh, draw on the left side. Lah. Something like this. Pew! Light damping is... Pew! Wow! Pew! Wow! That is, that is light damping. So I, oh wow, I'm going to just show you the mask scheme because there's a lot of things you can write here. Here are some of the cases. So let's see what they mention. You got distance from X to the trolley at equilibrium is 20, kind of stating the obvious. Period is 4. Initial motion is undamped. Undamped means no damping yet. Initial pull was to the right. That's interesting. How do we know that? Wait, 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 wait. Let's look at our thing. How do you know if the trolley goes to the right or left first? Look at the look at the length of the spring. If we pull it to the right, then we let go, so the L would start off pretty large. If you check the graph, the L starts off the longest possible, then only it starts to oscillate. So oh, that's very clever. You pull the trolley to the right, you can even talk about that too. Hmm. Okay, what else do we talk about here? Motion becomes damped from 12 seconds. Damping is light. Maximum speed occurs at all of these places. Stationary speed occurs at all of these places. Any three points, one mark each. So plenty you can talk about. So just throw it all in. Motion. They did not specifically ask about damping. So if you only talk about damping, maybe you could get like one, two, maybe that's it. There may not be enough marks just for damping. So we can talk about other things. Okay, so let's go to the last part, which is the graph sketching. We need to sketch the variation L with velocity for its first complete oscillation. If you have not tried this question, I encourage you to pause the video and go try it first because you will find yourself maybe a bit confused, which is normal. But at least you come back, we do it together, and you're like, oh, this is what they're asking for. Okay, so let's go. V and L. This is length of a spring, not time. Not time. We are not plotting against time. So it should not look like this. This is a graph against time. Nope. 
This is with respect to position, or in other words, the length of the spring. So just now we mentioned that the velocity is zero at some places, right? That's the equilibrium position. At equilibrium, velocity is zero. So where does equilibrium position occur? Gotta go see the graph though. Equilibrium occurs at 20. Alright, so 20 is where you're gonna have maximum velocity. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Equilibrium position is the fastest. Ooh. What's the fastest velocity? 7.9 is the fastest. So at equilibrium, it should be 7.9. Ah, that sounds more correct. So 7.9 is... 7.5 is here. Wait a second. 7.9 would be a little over. I think, yeah, we can put it up there. Somewhere here. Okay, this is the line where you will have uh, equilibrium position. So equilibrium was 20 cm right here. So I'm going to put 7.9, which is somewhere here. Of course, if you can see better on your paper, if you're doing this on the paper, please plot at, you know, 7.9. 7.9. Okay, and there's also one more in the opposite because you're doing for the first complete oscillation. So your velocity will also have one more down here, 7.9. Okay, this is referring to maximum velocity at equilibrium position. Okay, now we need to see where is zero velocity. All right, that's more correct. So zero velocity happens when you are at the maximum displacement, aka amplitude. Such a point is this one. This is where velocity is zero. Because your object go up, you need to U-turn, come down. Slow down, stop, U-turn, go back up. Slow down, stop, U-turn, go back down. So at the end points, these are where all the velocity is zero because the object is just about to u-turn and oscillate back in the other direction change in direction you have to have a v0 at the end so that's many places but it occurs at 25 cm and 15 cm that's where you will have the uh, zero velocity stop moving already ma stop moving at the end also 15 25 this looks like a oval shape Something like this. Oh man, I'll try to adjust this. There, it should look something like that. So it is a loop. Whenever you have graph against position, it usually is a circle or some quadratic shape or things like that. So how do you grade yourself for three points here? The first thing is, I'm looking for a maximum value. Is it at 7.9, which is what we calculated earlier. So your V max at equilibrium, should be roughly 7.9 and that's the first mark. Either the maximum and minimum. Then I look at where is V0. So V0 occurs at the end points of your oscillation. So at maximum displacement. Here. So there's two places, 15 and 25. That will be your second point. Lastly, it has to be a closed loop. For one complete oscillation, maybe you start here, you go one round, you come back. Closed loop. So if you draw a closed loop, that's the final one. Close. Yeah. No space around the left side. Uh. Closed loop. This is the final B1. If you're not sure why, think about this. Let's say you start at 25 cm up here. You go down to 15, and then you come back up to 25. That's one complete cycle. You can do the same thing here. You start at 25, go down to 15, go back up to 25. One complete cycle, it has to be a loop. And the velocity will change direction, so that's why we have some in the positive part and some in the negative part. Okay, so I think that's all for this question. I'll see you in the next one.